Hello everyone, I'm Tom and as a follow-up to last week's miscalibration video, today I'll show you how to use the Prushar calculator as that has been requested. And in the process of that, I'll explain what the things you're entering there actually mean. So the Prusa calculator takes many of the calculations that would go into setting up a printer from scratch and conveniently does them for you. And that ranges from filament volume calculations, hint, one kilogram of PLA actually has quite a bit less printing range than one kilogram of ABS, over steps per millimeter calculations, which is the part we'll be looking at today for both belt and lead screw systems, so typically X, Y as the belt axis and Z as the lead screw axis. Then it goes over optimal layer height to hit full steps on your stepper motor, more on that later, which can give you more consistent layers if you're not using an auto paralleling setup with a Z probe. And the last part is a calculation of the actual speed an axis can reach for given travel lengths and acceleration settings. You'll routinely see people proclaiming that they are printing at insane speeds, but in reality their printer can't actually accelerate to those speeds for the short moves that it's doing. And that's what you can verify with this last bit down here. But we're going to stick with the steps per millimeter calculations for now. So to start up, what does that number, say 100 steps per millimeter for a fairly normal setup, actually mean? You see, everything past the microcontroller on your printer's control board only has a very limited idea of what it's actually doing. The stepper motors and their drivers only get the command to move forward or backwards, one increment at a time. This is a step, and because of the way your drive system is set up, each step moves the corresponding axis by a set distance. Now when the microcontroller, or rather firmware running on that microcontroller, gets the command to move an axis by, for example, one millimeter, it uses the steps per millimeter setting and calculates how many electrical pulses, one for each step, it needs to send to the stepper driver to get the desired distance in the end. Now when we look at the Prusa calculator, you'll see that there are four variables that go into the steps per millimeter value in the end. Now in the simplest case, the stepper motor would rotate by one step for each pulse the microcontroller sends out and its driver receives. The step angle or steps per revolution is simply a datasheet value that determines how many full steps the motor has until its shaft makes a complete rotation 360 degrees. Typically our motors have 200 steps per revolution, some more precise ones use 400. While cheaper or savage motors sometimes have only 48, which of course means that the steps are laid out much coarser throughout a revolution than in a 2 or 400 step motor reducing the final resolution of that axis by quite a bit. So typically that setting is 200, but you can also easily look it up if you know the part number of your motor. Now because 200 steps per revolution actually means that each individual step is still rather large, stepper drivers can add some electrical trickery to split each step into finer micro steps. So for example, when your driver chip, typically an Allegro A4988, is set to 1 16th microstepping, the motor will only move approximately 1 16th as far per step pulse as without any microstepping. Now I'm saying approximately because microstepping, especially in the Allegro drivers, can be somewhat unpredictable and doesn't always position the motor at the exact subposition it intends to. Still, it's a nice way to give stepper motors a bit extra resolution and as a bonus, it also means that the motor will be a bit less noisy. The microstep setting for each axis is typically set with jumpers next to each stepper driver, but newer boards often make them software configurable instead. Which jumper setting means which microstepping setting is explained pretty well on Pololo's site, which I've linked to in the video's description. Typically that setting is 1 16th with all jumpers installed if you're using Texas Instruments DRV8825 drivers. You can go up to 32 times microstepping, but that might mean that the puny at mega microprocessor on your control board runs out of processing power and slows the entire printer down. So right now we have the microcontroller receiving move instructions and sending pulses to the driver. The driver doing its thing and splitting up the motor's physical steps into micro steps and the motor shaft finally rotating in accordance to what currents the driver is sending its way. That poor motor never had a choice. So basically we have the entire software and electric side covered of what goes into the steps per millimeter figure. So the last two things are the belt pitch and the pulley tooth count. 
Now the belt pitch is manufactured extremely accurately so that's actually a figure that we can rely on. Nowadays pretty much the only belt to use is GT22M, so a belt with a profile that's compatible with HDD, GT, GT2 and GT3 pulleys and with a 2mm pitch, meaning each tooth is precisely 2mm from the last one. Earlier printers used T5 belt with a 5mm pitch, I use HDD 3M, so a 3mm pitch one on my big Mandel 90. And some US manufacturers also use Imperial belt with the XL or MXL profiles which have a 5.08mm or 2.03mm pitch respectively. They are not compatible with pulleys for metric GT profiles and are actually rather rare these days with everybody moving on to GT 22M. Anyways, it's pretty easy to figure out which belt and pitch you have, as it usually says so on the back of the belt. If not, well, the article description should have at least included that bit of information when you bought the belt. Also, in the 3D printing sphere, GT2 is often used as an abbreviation for a 2mm pitch GT2 to M belt, even though it's technically incorrect or at least not precise. And the last part of the puzzle is the tooth count of the pulley. And that is sometimes noted on the side of the pulley, but it's also something that you can simply count. You know, how many teeth there are on the pulley. Mark one and then make your way around. So, when you have gathered all that information, you are ready to punch it into Prusa's calculator, which gives you a couple of presets for most parameters. The output can be used with the M92 command to temporarily set steps per millimeter for each axis, or used in the firmware's configuration to permanently set it. Now there is a note that you might still need to calibrate this further, but like I said in the previous video, that will likely make things worse instead of improving them. The steps per millimeter value we just calculated is extremely close to what your printer is actually doing, and for normal printers any tiny error here is within the tolerances of the FFF process anyways. So that was the process for the belt driven axes and for the Z axis which is usually driven by a threaded rod or in better printers by a real lead screw. It's even simpler, you don't need to know a belt pitch or pulley tooth count but instead simply the pitch of your lead screw. If that's a threaded rod it's usually an M8 or M6 one with a 1.25 or 1mm pitch while lead screws can have all kinds of pitches. Look it up in your printer's documentation if you don't know it. Using the steps per millimeter value for C is identical to X and Y, so there's really not much more to explain there. And that's it for today. And one more thing. I used to have a ServerMonkey survey under each video, but as it turns out, ServerMonkey is pretty greedy and was like, hey, cool survey you have there. Shame if anything would happen to it. You know what? You just pay us a cool 24 years a month and you'll actually get to see the new answers to that survey. And I wasn't really happy with that. So I moved on to Google Forms, which is free and unlimited and awesome. So don't use SurveyMonkey, use Google Forms. But it also means that I've lost all responses from that survey. So if you've already answered the SurveyMonkey one, please do it again on the Google Forms one linked in the description. And that survey is really helpful to me for picking topics that you actually want to see. And now that's really it. Feel free to use the like and share buttons if you feel like it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Or rather, you'll see me next week since I don't actually see my viewers. But that's okay, I guess. See ya.